Well, here's the immigration bill, uh, but there's no immigration minister to shepherd it through the House of Commons, second reading due Tuesday. You and I were standing here just over a year ago when the chief whip under Liz Truss uh, resigned briefly, then unresigned. I don't think we've seen, it's not of that, quite of that league, but I don't think we've seen anything quite as chaotic as the last uh, hour or so in this building, and there have been quite a few chaotic scenes. That, this bill didn't go far enough for Robert Jenrick. It's a bit of a blow for the uh, Prime Minister, not, not least the timing, but also because this, this guy was seen as one of his closest allies, someone who uh, supported him right at the very beginning and who's been with him the whole journey. Uh, Rishi Sunak tonight has been in front of Tory MPs trying to defend this bill. Uh, some people said his performance there was a bit petulant. Uh, one person on the right said, uh, he said, unite or die, who's going to die? He followed that with a devilish laugh. There is a revolt on the right at the moment, but it is not a unified revolt. Not everybody they need is there uh, to make sure that they can, say, topple Rishi Sunak, but some of them talk about toppling Rishi Sunak at this moment. Some of them talk about toppling the bill. They're not sure about toppling Rishi Sunak. Some of them, people who've always been on the right of the party, uh, hardline on issues like this, actually think they can live with this bill. So it's a divided right at the moment. They don't Some, know what they think. And someone just put it to me that, that at the moment he looks like he's facing a chronic condition, not an acute one. A sort of grumbling appendix could carry on of voices on the right. But the immediate threat is the second reading uh, vote on Tuesday. It takes around 30 rebels. Do any of them actually want to press the button then and what would Rishi Sunak do if they killed off this bill, which he's kind of linked his reputation to? Right, let's find out more about the bill itself and what it says. Here's Paul McNamara. They expect the boats to be stopped. It's incredibly important to me that we stop the boats. Stop the boats. Stop the boats. And finally, we will stop the boats. Rhetoric repeated again and again. Today, the legislation landed finally, but one big question still remains. Can you remind Japan be said, Prime Minister? He's adamant it can, and this evening the Home Secretary introduced emergency legislation you, uh, which they Mr. hope will enable the government's the flagship Speaker, policy like to, to go ahead. This is a partnership to which we and Rwanda are both completely committed. Rwanda is a safe and prosperous country. It is a vital partner for the UK, and our treaty puts beyond legal doubt the safety of Rwanda and ends the endless merry-go-round of legal challenges that have frustrated thus far this policy and second-guess the will of Parliament. Eighteen months ago, this plane was stopped by a European court from deporting asylum seekers. That ends, says the government, with this bill, declaring every decision-maker must conclusively treat the Republic of Rwanda as a safe country. And when it comes to interim measures, meaning orders from the European Court of Human Rights on a planned removal, the bill says it is for a minister of the crown and only a minister of the crown to decide whether the United Kingdom will comply with the interim measure. The draft legislation concedes that it may not be compatible with minimum human rights safeguards, a warning rarely given. But MPs on the right of the party are tonight poring over the legislation with their own lawyers. Their fear, this bill will still not prevent individual legal challenges. Adding to their concerns tonight, the fact centrist One Nation Conservatives seem pleased. I'm delighted that the government has uh, rejected the uh, calls to leave the ECHR and maybe pull out of UN conventions as well. Um, I hope that we can now proceed with getting the flights off, helping stop the boats uh, within the rule of law, which has always been my uh, main uh, purpose. Tory MPs on the right of the party have told Channel 4 News that they are already talking to Labour MPs about the possibility of coordinating how they vote on this legislation, unless they are convinced that European courts will no longer be able to stop flights getting off the ground. They say they've got options at any of the stages when this bill passes through Parliament. They can either vote against it with Labour or they can abstain. Abstain in such large numbers, they say, that when the bill gets to the House of Lords, the Lords will say, look, you haven't even got the support of your party, and they will, quote, rip it apart.
the plotting hasn't just begun, it's got rocket boosters under it. And there is no guarantee that the Prime Minister will be able to get this bill through Parliament. I'll be spending a lot of time going over it, but also talking to colleagues who have got um, a little bit more experience than me uh, and a little bit more legal expertise um, and we'll be um, you know, talking amongst each other and, and deciding whether it does the job or whether it doesn't. And after those conversations, if you're not convinced that this legislation is watertight, are you prepared to vote against the government? Well, I, I'm not. I, 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 I want to support legislation that works. I don't want to support legislation that doesn't That's work. a yes, isn't it? You're prepared to vote against the government. I don't think we're going to have to probably wait that long to see what happens. But ultimately, we, we, we want to see legislation that works. The Prime Minister told Tory backbenchers this evening now was the time to, quote, unite or die. A 50-50 choice he may not like which side of the coin some of his MPs land on. Well, I've been speaking to the uh, Tory MP, Sir Edward Lee, and I started by asking him for his reaction. I, I want to unite around the idea that we'll stop the boats. And unless the bill is lawyer-proof and proof against intervention by the European Court of Human Rights, then the boats will not be stopped. So we'll be stuffed. But they say it's very straightforward, you know, the law has now been settled. So what is it specifically that you object to? Well, what I understand is that there is still going to be some sort of right of appeal to the Court of Human Rights. And if there is a right of appeal, there will be an appeal. And we could potentially have delays taking months and months. And that could well prove you know, lethal to the Conservative Party. So that's that will, what I'm worried about. That, that will delay the deportation? Well, it'll delay the deportations right after the general election. And, and what effect will that have on um, the boats, do you think? Well, the boat, people will just come on, they'll, they'll, just, they'll keep on coming. The only thing that will stop people coming is if when they land on these shores, they are just detained in what I call a free-sided prison so that they can leave whenever they want to, they have to go home or that they go to Rwanda. Nothing else will stop the boats. No rhetoric, nothing else. And if we don't stop the boats, having said we're going to stop the boats, we're stuffed. And you don't think that this is sort of a matter of shame in terms of sort of sending people to a country that might be unsafe well, or, or to a prison? People have come from sort of desperate countries often. Yeah, well, they've come through perfectly safe countries. France is a perfectly safe country. These, you know, are perfectly nice, mainly nice young men who want a better life. They come through perfectly safe countries. They are putting their lives at risk by crossing the channel. We are offshoring them to a perfectly safe country and giving all sorts of assurances that they will never be sent on to an unsafe country. And what, what is the argument? I mean, so, so Rishi Sunak tonight has told you, unite around his plan or die. You won't unite around his plan. Well, we'll have you're, to see. You're going to die as a party, aren't you? I mean, well, we'll have, to, we'll have to see what amendments are put down, but I'm sure there will be amendments to toughen up this bill, and we'll see what happens. Are, are you facing oblivion, as Suella Braverman says? We're facing oblivion unless we can get a bill so watertight that no lawyer can stop it. Parliament has to exert its sovereignty and have to say, we are determined to stop the boats. The only way is you can offshore them to Rwanda and we cannot delay this any longer. So it's not a question of being for the Prime Minister or against Prime Minister. We have to get a bill that works. But it may come to that, mightn't it? Because if the Prime Minister doesn't listen to you and Suella Braverman and, and, and others and you are facing oblivion, might you be better to just remove him and put in Suella Braverman? No. I'm, no. I'm not, I've never been involved in leadership elections. I mean, we would look ridiculous. You, you'd rather just die in the next election? No, no, we would look ridiculous if we started changing prime ministers at this stage. We've got to convince the prime minister to produce a bill, to li listen to all the arguments that we can be sure is lawyer proof. Edward Lee, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I've been speaking to several Tory MPs on the right of the party about their reaction to the reported resignation of the Immigration Minister, Robert Jenrick. I'm very sorry to hear that. Robert's been a really good uh, minister and he's been working very, very hard to get this bill right. So I'm concerned to hear it. And maybe he's just had enough. He's obviously, let's he see. doesn't think it's going to uh, I, I mean, it? let's see. I mean, unless you can tell us what he said uh, on resigning, we'll have to wait and see what his statement is. I'm disappointed to hear it because we had a lot of faith in his role in government to push for the sort of bill that we wanted. Uh, that is a very serious issue for the government. It would be silly to pretend Otherwise, Robert Jenrick is highly respected, very capable minister, uh, was thought to be close to the prime minister. We'll have to wait and see why he's resigned. I haven't yet seen it.